Thinking about moving to Boston, let's get to know the Back Bay from talking about the different areas that make up the Back Bay and what they have to offer. From restaurants to schools to parks, we've got it all. Now the Back Bay is considered one of the crown jewel neighborhoods of Boston. It's got it all from a premier location to one of the most beautiful city settings one could ask for. When people think of Boston, they don't know it, but they're generally thinking of either Beacon Hill or the Back Bay. But those two neighborhoods, they couldn't be more different. The Back Bay used to be just that. It actually used to be a bay. They started filling in the bay in 1857 and it was completely filled in by 1882. And this is important because the bay it was built on is actually creating some problems for houses today. And these are really big problems, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. Hey, by the way, it's Jeff Chubb. If you have any questions or are thinking about making a move to Boston and its surrounding areas, then find my information in the description below. And as always, I'm always happy to chat. And if you find this video enjoyable, then I can't thank you enough for hitting that like button. But back to the back bay. What was once planned as only a residential neighborhood would later be adjusted a little bit to allow commercial property and now today holds some of Boston's most iconic buildings. These include the Prudential Center, the John Hancock Tower, and the world-renowned retail on Newberry Street. Today, a little more than 20,000 people call the Back Bay home. These lucky folks are drawn to this neighborhood because of its convenience as a centrally located neighborhood as well as its overall beauty. It's like living in a postcard each day with its picturesque tree-lined streets and parks. Now, the Back Bay is different than a lot of other neighborhoods as it doesn't have neighborhoods within the neighborhood, if you will. You have two sections of the Back Bay. Okay, it's actually really three sections. You have the area that is closest to the Public Garden, then the area downtown by Massachusetts Avenue, and then the third area is across from Mass Pike. And the affordability of the neighborhood goes just in that order. Uh, with the area by the public gardens being the most premier area and therefore the most expensive. And by the way, I use the term affordability pretty loosely. You'll see why. But for out-of-towners, the Back Bay neighborhood probably makes more sense than other neighborhoods around Boston as it was actually built on a grid. The streets that go north to south are named alphabetically, with Arlington Street being by the public gardens. The Back Bay is also serviced by three stations on the Green Line as well as the commuter rail. Now, the Back Bay is considered a walker's paradise as it is ranked the seventh most walkable neighborhood in Boston with a walk score of 97 and a transit score of 98. I personally found it kind of crazy that six other neighborhoods are actually considered more walkable than the Back Bay. Schools, museums, restaurants, areas of interest, and types of property that the Back Bay has to offer is coming up. But first, let's talk about all the green space that the Back Bay has to offer. Now, when it comes to parks in the Back Bay, the first park we're going to talk about was actually the first botanical garden in the United States. The Boston Garden is a 24-acre park and is home to winding paved walkways around the lagoon, picturesque flower beds, and weeping willow trees. If you've ever seen or heard of the swan boats in Boston, then this is where you'll find them. Now, Copley Square is a public square that is better known for what's around it than the actual park. Copley Square is surrounded by the Trinity Church, what used to be called, but is still known as the John Hancock Tower, and the Boston Public Library. It is also the finish line for the Boston Marathon and also hosts First Night and Boston's largest farmer's market. Now, the square is about to go through a remodel, which will feature a large raised platform, a modern found fountain, a new lawn, and a wide plaza. The Commonwealth Avenue Mall is a pretty cool park. This park is 32 acres and is what really forms the central axis of the back bay. It connects the Boston Public Garden to the fence, and Winston Churchill actually praised it as the grandest boulevard in North America. This park was part of Boston's and Back Bay's original plan. It is a grassy mall designed to create a straight line vista beneath a canopy of trees. It's an enjoyable one and a half walk, well, quite frankly, to say the least. Now, this leads us to the Charles River Esplanade, which is a three mile urban oasis that stretches along the shoreline of the Charles River. The Esplanade is home to the Hatch Shell Community Boating Sailing Center, Union Boat Club, and is perfect for running, cycling, kayaking, or just an enjoyable stroll to get a little R&R. &R. Now, the park was created in the 1930s and would then be expanded in the 1950s with the construction of Starrow Drive. There hasn't been much that has changed with the Esplanade since the 50s, which I personally think is a really great thing. It's a great escape from the hustle and bustle of city life. 
To me, what makes the back bay so special is the green space, the beautiful architecture and the location. Now the back bay was all planned out, which I think we can all appreciate the cohesiveness of that plan and that neighborhood today. The plan put zoning and building restrictions, including mandatory building setbacks, limits on building height, and the confining of building materials to masonry and brick. It's safe to say the vision, it was a true success, as today the back bay is considered one of the finest zones of Victorian houses in America. Granted, opinions are like belly buttons and everyone's got one, but I personally love the stunning brick brownstones and brick streets that the back bay offers. While those brownstones were mostly originally single family homes, today they have mostly been converted to condos. You're gonna find the occasional larger building mixed in, but for the most part, the back bay consists of the transformation of the large single family homes of the 1800s to the condos that we see today. Now I always pause for a moment when I walk into these grand entrances of each of these properties. I just like to sit there and imagine the time and what it was like in its original glory. And you can still find the occasional single family brownstone in the back bay, but be prepared to bring your checkbook. They are not cheap. The Back Bay isn't known for their public schools because they really don't have any. The Back Bay is part of the Boston School District with kids for the most part going to schools out of the neighborhood. There are some private schools available in the Back Bay and these include the Newman School, the Kingsley Montessori School, the Commonwealth School, and the Learning Project. But as I said, the Back Bay, it's part of the Boston uh, public school system which serves over 50,000 students throughout the city. Now for cultural additions to the city, the Back Bay has two very notable additions to the city. The Back Bay sports the Gibson House Museum and the famed Boston Public Library, which I spoke about briefly. Now the Gibson House is a time capsule of domestic life from the mid 19th to early 20th century, and the home served as the actual residence to three generations of Gibson family members and their households, from, and as well as their household staff from 1859 to 1854 or 1954. Now the museum has four floors of period rooms, including the original kitchen. But let's talk about the Boston Public Library as that was the first large free municipal library in the, and it's actually the third building that's housed the public library today. Now the library originally was opened in 1854 and then moved into its current building in 1895. Inside this majestic building, you're gonna find beautiful inner courtyard as well as famed sculptures and pictures. There are a lot of good restaurants in the back bay. I figure I'll just get to rattle off a few here that are really worth checking out. So if you're looking for steak, then the Capitol Grill and Abe and Louise and Grill 23 need to be mentioned. Atlantic Fish is really good, while Stephanie's on Newberry has a really strong following. Now, the Back Bay is not short of amazing places to eat and enjoyable places to grab a drink, that I can promise. The majority of housing stock that is available to Back Bay home buyers are condos. You're gonna find the occasional single family home, which is very expensive. And these condos are found in the Back Bay brownstones as well as larger buildings, which even include high-rise amenity rich buildings like the Clarendon, at, the Clarendon at 400 Stewart Street or maybe the Mandarin Oriental, which is considered one of the most premier buildings in Boston. I included average sales prices for the different types of buildings and bedroom condos for the uh, back bay in the description below, so be sure to check those out. Now, I figured it best to do it this way, just so that way I can update them from time to time. And I mentioned the problems that the back bay neighborhood is facing a little earlier, and a major and costly problem has been when they filled the actual back bay in, they built the houses on the back bay, they, they put them on pilings, and over time the water table has actually decreased, and the pilings in some of these houses are starting to deteriorate. We're also seeing some of this in Beacon Hill as well, and by the way, but when buying a home in the back bay, you may just wanna ask if the pilings of the condo building have been examined. And I actually included a link below as well in the description that really talks a lot about this phenomenon, what actually has to happen and how big of a problem it is. If it's affordability that's important to you, then the Back Bay might not be the right place for you. If you're looking for quintessential Boston or prestige and cachet, or maybe just an extremely convenient location within Boston, then the Back Bay might just be the spot for you. If you're looking to learn more about Boston and the other neighborhoods that Boston has to offer, then be sure to check out the other neighborhood profiles we've done. I've also put these links in the description below. If you're thinking about buying or selling a home in Boston, then I would love the opportunity to chat. You can reach me at 617-480-2600 or by email at jeff at boston2.com. Thanks for watching.